quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. It's where we all begin. Welcome to Lazy Dog Typewriters. Howdy folks, and welcome to Lazy Dog Typewriters, where before you we have the typewriter is so aristocratic they named it twice. The Royal Royalite 64. Not to be confused with the Royalite and not to be confused with the aristocrat for that matter. Royal was definitely not in a democratic mood when they were handing out names. And you can see why they'd be a little bit haughty after you look at this machine. Wipe off that little bit of wax. And you see before you a Royal Royalite 64. And these are kind of rare, if only for the fact, because they were only made for one single year. And that's how they got their name, of course, Royalite 64. So when was this machine made, Kevin? 1963. Well, that's kind of silly. It's the Royalite 64. Why did they call it a six? It was made in 63. What, what's all that about? Well, it's kind of like a new sports car. So they, it would be called a name brand, not copywriting. Um, 2021, and they would buy it in 2020. That's right. So just like cars, you didn't want to have yesterday's typewriter. You wanted to have tomorrow's typewriter. So they made these in 1963 and presumably sold them throughout 1963 and 1964 before switching to a new body style. This was kind of the last hurrah of the Royalite, traditional Royalite body style. And after the 63 and into 64, they went into the Futura body style, a squashed Futura as I like to call it. So it had the crenellated uh, front panel and a little bit more of a uh, forehead if you will, but still a very nice design. The Parade, the Signet, a whole bunch of different models all continued on in the vein of the Royalite, at least the interior uh, mechanics. So that said, let's take a look at this one. If you've never seen one before, I can understand why because there's just not that many. Uh, we have a keyboard, and it is lacking a number one and an exclamation point. So we have, uh, how do we make the number one, Kevin? L key. Push the lowercase L, that's right. And the exclamation point is made by? Um, period. Period, Back backspace, and um, apostrophe. apostrophe. Okay, which is over the eight, and that was standard for uh, the 1960s era. We didn't have our standard keyboard until well into the early 1980s with the PC when the asterisk etc. came up and the scent sign and the fractions got the axe. All right, so what strikes me most about the Royal Light 64 is the aquatic good looks. I always think of the Ray and Finding Nemo and it's swimming around and just has this really nice open look. You see a little bit of that in the Royal Customs, Safari, Sahara, again a whole bunch of different names, similar larger design. This is an ultra portable machine. It's designed to be very lightweight and it is. It's easy to take with you. Um, but there are always trade-offs when you do that, uh, and specifically not having a full keyboard or tabs. But let's go over what it does have and the feature set. So you've got your standard paper tray. Uh, I shouldn't say paper tray. You've got your paper bale, which has an integrated ruler on it. Um, but the real claim to fame on the right-hand side is the color selector switch. So we have red, white, and blue. White, of course, is stencil. Uh, blue and red for your ability to change colors. That was a big step up because the Royal Lights did not have that option. You were limited to a single color ribbon or having to flip the ribbon over, which you can always do, but it's not as convenient as changing it on the fly. Uh, your carriage release lever on the right hand side is here. There's the bell. There's the bell. Uh, right here you have your paper tension roller release so you can adjust your paper. You have margins which are set by pressing here and sliding there we go press and slide a little hard to do in frame you just press and slide those to set them where you want them to be a very simple mechanism uh, we have our I'll lift the camera up our line selector lever over here so you have zero which is freewheeling uh, and then you have one one and a half and two I always like the one and a half spacing as I think I've mentioned and uh, you have your carriage platen knobs, you have your carriage lock right here. If you just slick that down, it will lock the carriage in place when it comes back across. It's just a catch mechanism. This is a carriage shift machine. As you can see, the carriage comes up to get into the upper case. And that is pretty much the feature set of the Royal Light. So let's uh, move the carriage out of the way a little bit and take the lid off. 
It's always hard to do in frame. There we go. So a very nice uh, aquatic, if you will, gull wing. Now these are always interesting. The Royalites, as I found out long ago, had uh, slightly evolving pegs here on these connectors, how they attach. So some of the early Royalites have more of a curved uh, connector peg, foot if you will, and this one is more squared off. So they're not necessarily directly interchangeable. If you ever have a parts machine, all you typewriter repair folks out there, uh, be careful because they won't always fit. And just a quick peek, this very simple internal machine. This one is very clean um, and uh, just an overall nice machine. All right, let's put the lid back on. Ribbon cover, we should say. Those little feet just lock into a slot that is caught for them and then there are spring-loaded tabs in the front. Pop, it clicks right in. Okay, let's load up some paper and see how we like the type and touch. Now, frequently I like to use multiple sheets of paper. Um, in this one, I'm just gonna put in one for now and get started. And release the lever to adjust the lineup so that it's square. Just square the corners like that and put it back. And here we go. All right, let's do our typing test. I always have to remember, if you'll bear with me, to take it off the Lazy Susan. All right, so let's type out our sentence and see how she's ready to go. Let's move our margin over a little bit. Push and slide to about an inch so it lines up with what we already have. And can we see that? All right, here we go. Kevin, you want to zoom in a little bit? Yeah. All right, we'll put her in black. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. It's where we all put it into red. Again, you can hear a little bit of a ding. Okay, ribbon popped up a little. There we go. All right, um, it's just a totally fine machine in terms of typing. The some royal lights I have used, uh, I guess, are a little tired, but this one has not been used. It's, I mean, it doesn't seem like it's been used. It's nearly mint condition, and it is quite quite clearly, I think, the best typing Royal Light I've ever had. It's also the best looking and has the best paint, so I'm really quite uh, quite fond of it. And since there's only one of them I've ever come across, it's a Royal Light 64, due to its inherent uh, limited production, it's uh, kind of a nice little treat. So, I really like it. Um, let's go over the pros and cons. Kevin, you ready to give us a hand? Yeah. And we'll zoom in. I just want to show something else, too. I uh, cheated a little bit, and I typed out some stuff ahead of time. And what you see here is, on top is a blue and green ribbon, which is really one of my favorites, color choices. But what I do notice is, when you put a brand new ribbon in, in this particular case, sometimes they're a little bit excessively inky. And I find this impression to be fine, easy to read, but it's a little teeny bit smudged. And that's because, nothing the typewriter did, but it's because the ink ribbon itself is a little bit smudgy. So if you come down here and look at our sneak peek of our pros and cons, wow, you'll see that. That is very crisp. There's no smudging going on, and that's simply because, guess what? That ribbon is 35 years old, and it's still got ink in it. So maybe 35 years ago it was highly smudgy, uh, or maybe a little smudgy. It just goes to show you, you have here a manual printing press, and there are a lot of factors that go into the quality of the impression that you make. One of them is the ink, amount of ink on the ribbon, the quality of the ribbon, whether it's a nylon or silk or cotton, and the other is the hardness of the platen, how many sheets of paper you have. So. It's a lot of fun just playing around with trying to get what you consider to be the ideal impression. So, having said all that, let's take a look at the pros. Kevin, what's the first pro? Um, it has enhanced functionality, aka bio-color ribbon selector switch. Yeah, bi-color, not bio-color, but bi-color. So definitely that's a good one, and we talked about that. What else does it have, Kevin? Um, it has really aquatic good looks. Think Stingray from Finding Nemo, yeah, you can, and a few other things. Yeah, it's... What else? Um, it's lightweight and portable, fits in pack pack. Yeah, and one last thing? Um, it's an all-metal construction. All-metal construction, yeah. And, you know, plastic is perfectly fine, but sometimes it's nice to have all-metal. It's just a little more rugged. It really holds paint well. What about some of the cons, Kevin? Um, well, it has no dedicated number one key, which, um... My brothers usually don't have, but it still is kind of a 
Yeah, we were kind of stretching for the cons, weren't we? So there's no dedicated one. That's kind of like saying, oh, I'm, I'm too humble as one of my weaknesses in that job interview. Um, and no tabs. Now, tabs is a little thing you might miss. I don't find that I use tabs hardly at all, so I don't really miss them. But it is definitely a feature that's not there. And here we have our sentence. Quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dogs where we all begin. I think that's the first time I've ever typed it without making any typos, so it must truly be a magical machine. One other con I guess you could dig up is that there is no paper support on the back of this Royalite uh, 64. So your paper is going to droop over the back, uh, and that's kind of a minor con, I suppose, but hopefully we can live with that. So, all in all, it's a really nice machine. We've enjoyed it. We've enjoyed making what is the only uh, actual review video on the internet, and there's only one other of these on the typewriter database. So soon, when we're done resizing all of our pictures down to size, uh, there will be two, and we hope you've enjoyed it. We hope that we can help you learn to love the Royal Royalite just a little bit more. Uh, we all need a little aristocracy from time to time. Thanks much. Oh, and Kevin wants to tell you that there's going to be, when we reach a 100 subscribers, what are we going to do, Kevin? We are going to have a garage tour. A garage tour. And who doesn't love a garage tour? And we'll just pan up to give you a full view of our garage right now. Please like, subscribe, and share.